Welcome to part 2 lecture of Constitutional Law class PSE 302. So let's discuss the classification of persons under political law and who are considered to be citizens based on the Constitution. First, we have natural born, naturalized, dual citizens. We also have aliens, stateless individuals mentioned in Article 21 of the Family Code. So why is it important that we should classify citizens or different citizens in the Philippines? Of course, it is relevant for the rights, eligibility for national office. In fact, in the Constitution, there has been a classification that we should or who are eligible to run for certain positions like presidency, vice presidency, senators, congressmen, etc. It's required that um, a candidate must be a natural born Filipino. Okay. And also our no less than the constitution under Article 4 provides who are natural born citizens of the Republic of the Philippines. Otherwise, if you are not, then you are not eligible to run for public office. Um, exploitation of natural resources for citizens, modes of acquisition of citizenship. Because in the natural um, patrimony provision of the constitution, there are certain limitations in which um, certain entities or corporations should be owned 100% by the Filipinos. Like for example, the mass media, it is required na dapat ang tag-iya sa mass media kay Filipino good na 100%. And in fact, that's the case of uh, Rappler also. And one of the contentions against um, the existence of Rappler is that the existence of uh, PDC because they, there is a centilia of um, foreign participation uh, in, in the network. That's why they were questioned based on the constitutionality of its existence okay uh, by blood by naturalization and by marriage okay so those are the classifications of persons under political law so who are filipino citizens number one those who are citizens of the philippines at the time of the adoption of the constitution this has to be stated because prior to the 1935 constitution, there was the Philippine Bill of 1902, which provided for the en masse Filipinization. Those whose father or mothers are citizens of the Philippines, the Philippine law on citizenship adheres to the principle of pius sanguinis, meaning by blood. So if imuhang mama is Filipino or imuhang papa is a Filipino, then you are a, you are considered as Filipino. So it's the relationship is based on blood. Okay. So again, in order to determine Filipino citizenship, the answer ni mo kung nabasi dugo ng Pinoy. Okay. If for instance the mother is a Russian, tapos yung father kay an American. So um on the basis of the principle of sanguinis, the child Okay, between the spouses or, or the child of the spouses will not be considered as a Filipino. No? Simple as that. So there under the child follows the nationality or citizenship of the parents regardless of the place of birth as opposed to the doctrine of use solely which determines the nationality or citizenship on basis of place of birth. In fact, the uh, US, no, so United States, they follow the principle of use solely which means that the uh, citizenship is determined based on the place of birth. Okay, so kung ipanganak ka sa Germany, kung ipanganak ka sa um, US, o ipanganak ka sa Mexico, then um, the place of birth determines your citizenship. So if you're an American and then you are born here in the Philippines, then under the the US law, no, you are you are considered as a Filipino following the doctrine of you solely. His citizenship was also drawn from the presumption that having died in 1954 at the age of 84, 
Lorenzo would have been born in, 18, uh, in 1870. In the absence of any other evidence, Lorenzo's place of residence upon his death in 1994 was presumed to be the place of residence prior to his death, such that Lorenzo would have benefited from the en masse Filipi Filipinization that the Philippine Bill had effected in 1902. Being so, Lorenzo's citizenship would have extended to his son, Alan, respondent's father on the issue of the citizenship of uh, Fernando Po Jr., in his presidential bid. So this is the case of uh no same with uh Polia Manzares, Mrs. Comlet, an illegitimate child of a Filipino father and an alien woman is considered as a Filipino. An illegitimate child of a Filipino woman and alien man is a Filipino, as there is no distinction as to whether or not the child is legitimate or illegitimate. So regardless of their status, no kung on ba legitimate or illegitimate ba na siya basta kay ang iyahang parents um or either of the parents is uh, Filipino then the offspring will uh, be presumed or considered as Filipino So the evolution of the principle of U.S. Sanguinis under the 1935 Constitution, there was a need of election of Philippine citizenship if only the mother was Filipino. Okay. But in the 1973 and the 1987 Philippine Constitution, it now states that a person whose father or mother is a Filipino shall be deemed a Filipino citizen. So again, no, right now we follow the 1987 Constitution, our existing um, Constitution in the Philippines. But before, okay, there is a need of election. Uh, it's understandable because, you know, we were colonized by the Spaniards in sometime in 18, uh, 1800s, no? from 1500s to 1800s. And then Americans came in, tapos, uh, we were occupied also by the Japanese um, <clears throat> government. So, here during the 1935 constitution which is under the we were under the american occupation no? there's a need of election of philippine citizenship if only the mother was filipino okay kung filipino ang imong mama tapos nakaasawa siya um american okay, at that time so there's a need of election election of uh, your citizenship those born before January 17, 1973 of Filipino mothers who elect Philippine citizenship upon reaching the age of majority. What's the significance of the date? The effectivity of the 1973 constitution. So there is no more distinction of whether or not the mother or father is a Filipino. Who can elect a legitimate child okay, whose mother is a Filipino and father is an alien? So let's say, for example, in 1930 okay um imong mama na yang husband kay is an american so it is required no that the child has to elect philippine citizenship for as long as yang mother kay yang mother kay filipino it is sufficient that the filipino mother was filipino at the time of her marriage the mother need not be a filipino citizen at the time she gave birth to the child in question. This is because there are states where their laws provide that marriage will affect the citizenship of the Filipino wife. Otherwise, the benefit would be limited. Um, take note that if, for example, you are a Filipino and you marry um, an African or a European guy, you know, so that would not, that would not um, have or incur substantial effect on your citizenship. Because it doesn't matter, no, it would not affect your your citizenship status. Okay. So under the 1987 constitution, it's simple and straightforward. Now, for as long as no, we follow the principle of your sanguinis, for as long as your parents are Filipinos, then following the by blood principle, the use sanguinis principle, then you are considered as a natural born Filipino. Okay, this provision applies only to legitimate children. 
The respondent who was considered lead that of an illegitimate child, considering that her Chinese father and Filipino mother, respondent became a Filipino upon birth. Record, record shows that respondent elected Filipino citizenship when she reached the age of majority. So again, when to elect the constitution states at the time when he reaches the age of majority at that time. No? So what's the age of majority? That's 18. So um, as a child, the moment na maabot mong edad of 18, 18 years old na ka, then you are eligible to elect Philippine citizenship. Okay. In the case of Ching, in 1994, Ching was already 35 years old when he complied with the requisites of CA624, which is over 14 years after he had reached the age of majority. All his acts, such as passing the CPA and bar exams, cannot best him. Citizenship, thus, he is not allowed to take the lawyer's oath. But he can apply for naturalization. Okay, so uh, uh, I want you to read the keys. How to elect residing in the Philippines? The statutory formalities of electing Philippine citizenship are a statement of election under oath, a note of allegiance to the constitution and government of the Philippines, and the registration statement of election and of the oath with nearest civil registry. In the case of MA versus Commissioner in 2010, the instant case presents a different factual setting. Petitioners complied with the first and second requ requirements upon reaching the age of majority. So, this is a statement of election, obviously, out of allegiance. Okay? The lacking requirement is the number three, which is the registration. It was only the registration of documents of election with the civil um, registry that was belated, belatedly done. We ruled that under the facts, peculiar to the petitioners, the right to elect Philippine citizenship has not been lost and they should be allowed to complete the statutory requirements for such election. Okay, So the acts of election and the registration with nearest civil registry were all done beyond the reasonable period of three years upon reaching the age of majority. So the following, again, no, are the requisites. We have three requisites. And take note that there can be no implied election as held in the case of Republic versus Sagun. Respondent cannot assert that the exercise of suffrage and this participation in election exercises constitute a positive act of election of Philippine citizenship since the law specifically lays down the requirements for acquisition of citizenship by election. The mere exercise of suffrage continuous and uninterrupted stay in the Philippines and other similar acts showing exercise of Philippine citizenship cannot take place of election of Philippine citizenship. So, pag nakabutar na kadiri, you know, for how many times, if you didn't follow the, the requisites in the election of Philippine citizenship, then uh, that would not be sufficient for you to comply the requisites. The right to elect Philippine citizenship is an inchoate right. During his minority, the child is an alien. No. So again, we are contemplating a situation here wherein a mother who is married to an alien, tapos the offspring, the child, has to, there's a requirement, no, no, for, uh, there's a requirement that you have to elect Philippine citizenship uh, by the time you have reached the age of majority. So those who are naturalized in accordance with law. Okay, so um, I don't know if you know uh, Andre Blatch, the naturalized player for the Philippine basketball team. No? So he was naturalized here in the Philippines. But again, there are certain requirements that he, he needed to follow in order to be successful with his naturalization. So when we speak of naturalization, it contemplates judicial naturalization. We also have administrative naturalization and legislative naturalization. Okay. So what are the, the procedural steps? No? There must be declaration of intention with the Office of Solicitor General, which shall be made one year before the filing of the petition. Um, the filing of petition, publication of the petition with the official gazette 
or in a newspaper, general circulation, once a week for three consecutive. If granted, there shall be a rehearing within, the, within uh, two years. Okay. After which oath taking and issuance of certificate of naturalization. So um remember that let's say ang nag file ka o petition for uh inten intention, your intention, you know, to be naturalized here in the Philippines. And you start and you filed it in 2010. Tapos na complete ang tanang procedure sa court, no? Uh, after five years, so let's say 2015 pa, okay? So, question, when When is the exact time where you can be considered as a Filipino citizen? Now, again, it will retroact to the time you have filed the petition in 2010. So, it is as if you are already a Filipino citizen in 2010. Okay. Um, okay. So clarification lang no. So for num for number 3 requirement those born before January 17 1973 of Filipino mothers who elect Philippine citizenship upon reaching the age of majority. So kani sila katuning instances no na gipanganak sa before 1973. Okay. Okay, so let's proceed. What are the characteristics of naturalization? No, uh, usual requirements dito dapat na kay lucrative job, no? Kung wala kay lucrative job, there's a possibility that your naturalization will not be granted. Because um of course, no, kung if you're a foreigner and you wanted to be a Filipino, no, um that would be a supplemental responsibility of the Filipino to you know, to to provide you opportunities for job, etc. So that's why it's a requirement na dapat na kay ng means of livelihood po diri sa Pilipinas nga di ang kamagpabuhi. No? So that's the concept there. No? Uh, number one is uh, it is a mere privilege, not a natural right. Thus must be strictly complied with. So it's discretionary also on the part of the state whether to whether or not to grant your petition. So it is not barred by res judicata. So you can still file. Let's say, for example, in 2010, um, your petition was denied for some reasons. Then in 2015, you've refiled again. No, So you can still refile. Naturalization of father benefits uh, wife and minor children. In fact, in the case of Andre Blatch, no, um, his children also were studying here in the Philippines when he uh, get naturalized as a Filipino. Action for denaturalization does not prescribe. So um, anytime no, you can file uh, denaturalization if you don't feel that ah, wa ko ganahe sa kultura sa Pilipinas, sa Pilipinas or I don't want to be a Filipino again or I don't want to be a Filipino anymore. So you can uh, denaturalize Okay, so it will not prescribe. So, bisan pag, let's say for instance, pag uh, next year, no, karon na approve imuhang naturalization. Tapos the next year, um, you you wanted to denaturalize, then uh, you will still be allowed to do so. We have <clears throat> administrative naturalization uh, in RA 9139. So what are the qualifications? You are born in the Philippines residing there in since birth and not less than 18 years of age at the time of filing. So bata pa ka, okay? well, before 18. Or rather, not less than 18. So age of majority gyapon. Sorry. Administrative sins application is made through the Special Committee on Naturalization headed by the Solicitor General. Diba we have three types. We have judicial naturalization, administrative naturalization, and legislative naturalization. Kanang mubuhat yung kagbalaod. No? So here, it's administrative ang proceeding. 
Um, lastly, we have legislative naturalization, a direct act of Congress allowed since in accordance with law, thus Congress by its plenary powers can grant citizenship to a single person. Note, this takes the nature of a private bill. So sub-derivative natural naturalization, when citizenship is conferred to wife of naturalized husband, again, it operates also to the, to the naturalized um, Filipinos children and wife. Minor children of naturalized husband and alien woman upon marriage to a national. So if you are a Mexican, for example, you get naturalized. Imuha pong mga anak, katong mga minor, and your wife, they can acquire the citizenship. Under Section 2 of the Constitution, Article 4, natural born citizens are those who are citizens of the Philippines from birth without having to perform any act to acquire or perfect their Philippine citizenship. Those who elect Philippine citizenship in accordance with paragraph 3, section 1 here of shall be deemed natural born citizens. Now, katong we discussed na to, um, earlier na um, those uh, persons who were born or before 1973 and ang Filipina wife or Filipina mother, Filipino mother, who elects a Philippine citizenship uh, by the time they have reached the age of majority. So they are still, um, under Section 2, they are still considered na natural born citizens. So therefore, pwede gaya sila makadaga ng senator, congressman, pwede gaya pa sila magdaga presidente, vice president. Those who elect Philippine citizenship prior to the 1987 constitution are deemed as natural born citizens, as held in the case of Ong versus HRET. Um, repatriation restores status as natural born. So, repatriation results in the recovery of the original nationality. Therefore, if he is a natural born citizen before he lost his citizenship, he will be restored to his former status as a natural born. Boy. Okay. Um, derivative naturalization or naturalized citizens only. Is the minor child who was naturalized along with the parents a natural born citizen given that he did not perform any act to acquire or perfect Philippine citizenship? The answer is no. It is clear, therefore, that from the records of the court, Ong is a naturalized Filipino citizen. The alleged subsequent recognition of his natural status by the Bureau of Immigration and the DOJ cannot amend final decision of trial court stating that he and his mother were naturalized along with his father. Okay. So... This is a recent case, no? uh, a fair or relatively recent case, the case of Pauli Manzares versus Comelec. So here the Supreme Court said that foundlings are natural born citizens. As a matter of law, foundlings are its class natural born citizens, while the 1935 Constitution enumeration is silent as to foundings. There is no restrictive language which would definitely exclude foundlings either. It has been argued that the process to determine that the child is a foundling, and ang foundling ba, tiba nakita sa simbahan or gibilin sa palingki ang baby, gibiyan sa inahan, no? That's foundling, di ba? So nakita. And then, uh, how can you determine kung ang iyang parents di ay Filipino ba? Filipino ba yun? Because you would not know. Because you don't know the, you don't know the parents of the child. Okay. So the issuance of a founding certificate under these laws and the issuance of said certificate are acts to acquire a perfect Philippine citizenship which make the foundling a naturalized Filipino at best. This is erroneous. Okay? In the first place, having to perform an act means that the act must be personally done by the citizen. In this instance, determination of founding status is done not by the child but by the authorities. Secondly, the object of the process is the determination of the whereabouts of parents, not the citizenship of the child. Lastly, the process is certainly not analogous to naturalization proceedings to acquire Philippine citizenship or the election of such citizenship by one born of alien father and 
uh, Filipino manner under the 1935, excuse me, constitution, which is an act perfect it. So here, in the case of Pole Manzares, no, uh, remember she's a foundling, and when he ran, when she ran for presidency in 2016, um, her candidacy was challenged because of the issue whether Senator Poe was uh, indeed or is indeed a uh, natural born Filipino, which is a requirement under the 1987 constitution, nga dapat natural born ka. So here, the Supreme Court cited actually um, multiple and various kind of international laws you know, in order to support its um, conclusion that Pauli Manzares or being a foundling is a natural or would be sufficient for you to acquire natural citizens um, natural born citizenship status okay so according to the supreme court no citing various international law principles na it's a non alienable rights also that you really have to have um nationality and the fact that you are a foundling you are found in that particular state then that would not be a reason for the state to deprive the child or the person for his citizenship status no something like that na kanang it's a right no it's a non alienable rights so we don't have the authority to deprive that person a um these uh, internationally recognized no or universally recognized rights so largely nagfocus yun siya sa sa international law principles conferment of citizenship by direct act of congress no so let's say nai uh, what's the situation here there's a person a foreigner tapos there's um a law which makes that person let's say an american no? and there's a law ra2222 okay um making that person a Filipino or natural born Filipino citizen. If citizenship is reacquired by any act of Congress or through that of naturalization other than repatriation to a former status as natural born cannot be had. Unlike that of um repatriation. So ang difference there is that in repatriation meaning you are being sent back to your country. So in that case you would reacquire your status, your former status as a natural born. Okay? So, officials required to be natural born. Kinsamani, members of CHR, members of uh, Central Monetary Authority, Kansa Central Bank, constitutional commissions like the Commission on Audit, Civil Service Commission, Commission on Elections, Ombudsman and his deputies, Justices of the Supreme Court and lower collegiate courts, members of Congress and President and Vice President, uh, they're required to be natural-born Filipinos. So remember that adoption is never a mode of conferring citizenship. There is no law or even constitution that says that adoption is a mode of acquiring citizenship. Let's say you're Filipinos and then you went to Australia to adopt someone. Okay. Um, does that operate as uh, an automatic conferment of Filipino status or Filipino citizenship to that child? Um, no, of course, no. Because again, adoption is never a mode of conferring citizenship. Under Section 3, um, Philippine citizenship may be lost or uh, may be lost of or reacquired in a manner provided by law. So, can you lose your citizenship? No? Pwede mang ni mo siya, pwede mang ka mag-renounce sa imuhang pagka-Pilipino. No? I-renounce ni mo nga, di na kung gusto. Nakakahiya bilang isang Pinoy. No? Kapoy kay maging Pilipino. So what are the grounds for loss of citizenship? Number one, naturalization in a foreign country unless one avails a pre-acquisition under RA 9225. We'll discuss that uh, later on. 
express renunciation of citizenship so um nagfile ba ka og kuan petition to renounce your citizenship no so ultimately you will lose your citizenship subscribing to an oath of allegiance to support the loss of another country so ang imong allegiance imong loyalty wala na sa Pilipinas tuan na sa China or tuan na ba sa sa ba? Singapore or wherever rendering service in the armed forces of another country except okay so na mga exception but as a general rule kung ma-render ka sa arms armed forces let's say sa Afghan government okay so that would operate as uh, uh, loss to your uh, citizenship no except when the Philippines has defensive or offensive pact of alliance with said foreign country so they have a military agreement okay they have a pact or alliance no so uh, of course you can work together no in that case foreign country maintains armed forces in the Philippines territory with the consent of the Philippines, okay, just like in the case of uh, US, U.S. and the Philippine government. The visiting forces agreement also where the Philippine, um, the armed forces of the Philippines and the U.S. has the has to exercise military activities okay, as part of the agreement. Cancellation of the certificate of naturalization. Uh, ultimately, you will lose your citizenship also. So kung ipakansal ni Andre Blatch ang iyang citizenship then again no di na siya Filipino the certer in the armed forces in time of war with another state not mere rebels Okay so kung member ka sa armed forces tapos ni kampi ka dito sa Picas okay um definitely no lahi na imong citizenship ana no it will lose your citizenship because your um allegiance and your loyalty does not belong to the Philippine government so for unsa pang purpose no but in case okay, si Mr A na wala na iyang citizenship na wala ang iyang pagka Filipino because he renounced expressly or he applied as a military in the armed forces of other country or saba nagtake siya out of allegiance sa lain ng gobyerno the question is can you acquire reacquire your citizenship status the answer is yes no how can you reacquire through naturalization magpa-naturalize ka bag o direct act of congress repatriation and out of allegiance under RA 9225. So this is the most common, no? RA 9225, uh, which will be discussed later. So who are, of course, we know na naturalization, katong, uh, it's either court, admin, and you know direct act of Congress. You also have, katong, di ba, you filed the petition, and then it will retroact to the moment you have filed your petition. But uh, let's talk about repatriation. Who are qualified to be repatriated? Deserter in the armed forces, Filipina lost citizenship by marriage to alien under RA 8171, natural born who lost it by political or economic necessity, economic refugees of Sabah due to Mindanao conflict. Diba? This is the usual reasons why people are considered to be refugees because they do not have access to food, to drink, whatever, no? and they have suffered economic turmoil, just like in the case of uh, Venezuela, who, uh, which suffered greatly with economic um, crisis. So that's why they had to go to different um, neighboring states in order to seek for help. No? So when they become refugees, um and then they they once the time that the state or their country has recovered already from the economic problem then they can be repatriated also no natural born who list off by naturalization and joining armed forces without consent of philippine government so kato sila pwede mo pwede mo repatriate is sent back mo dito sa philippines 
or to the country where you belong. We have the principle of retroactivity. What is this? Uh, the case of Rivaldo versus Kamalek in 1986. Rivaldo applied for repatriation in 1994. He ran for governor in 1995 and won but was not proclaimed because of pending question as to his citizenship. He received grant only on June 30, 1995 at 2 p.m. Okay. So, sa 1995 ba, nag-grant ang iyang repatriation. To remove all doubts, the repatriation of Rivaldo retroacted to the date of the filing of his application in 1994. Now, this is what I'm saying na kung sa year 2010 ka nag-file o petition for naturalization or repatriation tapos na-approve siya five years after in 2015 mo retroact siya. No, it is as if you became Filipino in 2010 the year where you filed your petition. So, mo, mo retroact siya dito ang iyang effectivity. Section 4, citizens of the Philippines who marry aliens shall retain their citizenship unless by their act or mission they are deemed under the law to have renounced it. No, So again, if you marry an alien or a foreigner, okay, kung mga sawa kag afam, it does not necessarily follow na you also um, follow the citizenship of your husband who is, let's say, a German or a, um, tawag ganit, uh, let's say, African, okay? So, it will retain or you will be able to retain your citizenship. Unless, of course, there's an app or a mission na, sa ba, nag-take baka allegiance sa other country or by your actions, you don't want to be Filipino um, anymore. Okay, so those actions... Okay. Uh, it is deemed that you have renouncing, uh, you have renounced your Filipino citizenship. Okay. So we have cases here also. Marriage to an alien does not result to lose of citizenship. Marriage alone does not result. Yeah. And note that if a Filipino spouse is granted foreign citizenship by virtue of marriage, and the Filipino spouse decides to run for Congress, the Filipino spouse need not comply with the requirement under RA 9225K. In the first place, you have not lost your citizenship no, by simply marrying a foreign um, person, no, a foreigner, precisely because the Filipino spouse in such case did not acquire their in the foreign citizenship by his or her positive act of naturalization with that foreign country. So, kung nangasawa ka o Amerikano, tapos uh, naminyo ka a year after you run for Congress, didagan ka pagka congressman, you can still run. And um, you cannot, your candidates cannot be questioned based on RA-9225 or the fact that you have not reacquired your citizenship, kay wala mang kay, kailangan i-reacquire, kay you have not lost your citizenship in the first place. Okay? So that's the logic there. You can still, you can definitely, no, uh, run for office. Okay, so marriage by an alien to a Filipino. What if in reverse, no? Ang Filipino kay ang husband, ang lalaki, o niya, ang alien kay ang woman, ang babae. An alien woman marrying a Filipino native born or naturalized becomes ipso facto. A Filipina provided she is not disqualified to be a citizen under the law. That's the case of Lim Yao versus Commissioner. Under this provision, foreign women who are married to Philippine citizens are deemed ipso facto Philippine citizens and it is neither necessary for them to prove that they possess other qualifications for naturalization at the time of their marriage, nor do they have to submit themselves to judicial naturalization. So you see the difference, no? Kung ang Filipino is ang lalaki, the derivative ka ng citizenship will apply na katupad ang imong asawang uh, afam, no? Shall be considered as a Filipino. Whereas, if the woman okay 
is the Filipino and the husband is a foreigner, okay? It will not automatically um, operate as confirmment of foreign citizenship, okay? Regarding the steps that should be taken by an alien woman married to a Filipino citizen in order to acquire Philippine citizenship, the procedure followed in the Bureau of Immigration is as follows. So, Monisha, no, ang kailangan. So, gentlemen, if you are planning to marry a foreigner, okay, so money in you hang e follow. Alien woman must file a petition for the cancellation of her alien certificate of registration, alleging that he is married to a Filipino and she is not disqualified. Okay. Upon filing, it shall be accompanied or supported with affidavit of petitioner and Filipino husband to the effect that petitioner does not belong to any of the group disqualified. So let's say rebel ka, no? So uh, again, that would be um, an impediment for your citizenship status. Bureau of Immigration will then conduct an investigation and promulgate its order or decision granting or denying the petition. If granted, she shall take an oath of allegiance to support the Constitution and the laws of the Philippines. So, when we say ipso facto, no, it should be understood that the alien woman who marries Filipino need not comply with the judicial naturalization, but just have to comply with the administrative process katong sa Bureau of Immigration na requirements. Okay, so mo lang to. Mas simpler siya. Okay? Uh, kumpara sa katong judicial naturalization yun na mag-declaration pa kasi, mag-declare kasi may intention, mag-file pa petition etc., etc. No? So, here, if the woman is an alien who is married to a Filipino, okay, it will uh, automatically confer that alien woman the citizenship of being a Filipino. The effect on alien male, okay? General rule on alien male must satisfy a 10-year residency requirement which is continuous. Okay? So, on the part of, uh, of the foreigner who is married to a Filipina, okay, as a general rule, um, he must be a resident of the Philippines for at least 10 years. Except the 10-year continuous residence required shall be understood as reduced to 5 years for an alien man who married to a Filipino woman. But he still has to apply for naturalization. So it's not ipso facto, it's not automatic compared sa babae. Okay, kung babae... Okay, madala, madala rasiya. Okay, derivative um, confirmment of citizenship. Okay, kung lalaki gani, napasay, kailangan i-follow which is the naturalization proceeding. Section 5, dual allegiance of citizens is inimical to national interest and shall be dealt with by Law. So, dili man pwede nga duha yung allegiance. Okay? Although the Philippine government does not prohibit um, dual citizenship, but what it prohibits is the dual allegiance. Yung loyalty ba? Okay? Kay, let's say, for example, um, you are loyal to Philippine government. At the same time, you are loyal to Chinese government. What if mag ang dalawang bansa? No? So, asa naman imong loyalty magbilang in that case. That's why it's not healthy and it's not allowed um, as far as our laws are concerned because it involves national interest of which we are off to protect. Okay? So, what's the difference between dual citizenship and dual allegiance? Dual citizenship is involuntary. Okay? Involuntary siya in a sense, meaning kuan, let's say, imuhang mother is a Filipina, imuhang father is, a, is an American, okay? And the American government follows no, the principle of you solely. Na kung ipanganak ka, 
sa US, then you're an American pursuant to the doctrine of you solely. Kung ipanganak, uh, kung on the on the end of the Philippine government also, no, kung ang imuhang parents or either of your parents is a Filipino, then you're a Filipino. Okay? Sa dual allegiance, it's voluntary because uh, it's really within your deliberate um, thinking or intention. Kung asa ka loyal, no? kung where, do, where does your allegiance belong? Okay? A situation in which an individual holds citizenship in more than one country, it arises when as a result of concurrent application of different laws of two or more say, states simultaneously considered a national by more than one state. So again, no, in my example, the Philippines follows doctrine of you sanguinis, tapos ang US nagfollow ang doctrine of you solely. So you are, you know, kanang napatungaan ka sa duha ka law sa America o sa Pilipinas. So in that case, you can be considered as a dual citizen. Okay? It's involuntary. It's not your decision. It's again, it's it is what it is because that's Uh, you are being placed in that situation because of you you're married to a uh, your your mother is married to a um to a foreigner on the other hand uh, the well allegiance refers to a situation whereby a person simultaneously owes by some positive act loyalty to two or more states Okay, so it's voluntary. What are the causes of dual citizenship? Number one, born of Filipino mother or father in a foreign country, which follows you solely. If alien father, but father's law accords such children status as citizens. No. Marriage where law of alien spouse grant citizenship to Filipino spouse unless Filipino spouse renounce citizenship. And the reacquisition under RA-9225. So in that case, you, be, uh, you will become a dual citizen. Okay. So under the local government code, what one of the disqualifications for local public elective posts under such provision are those with dual citizenship. So again, remember that when we talk or when we speak of dual citizenship, it means that dual allegiance. No? So what is prohibited is not dual citizenship per se, but the dual allegiance. Duhay mong loyalty. The mere act of filing of certificate of candidacy terminates status of a person as a dual citizen. Okay. Kung file ka, okay. let's say in the case of Grace Po, okay, she's, also, she's also considered as a dual citizen, but when she files her candidacy for president, Um, it operates now that um, it will ter terminate her status as a dual citizen. So again, mere filing of COC would suffice. Kung file ka o pagkakandidato. Okay, so let's say dual citizen ka, imong mama, Pilipina, imong papa, America, Americano. No? So... Uh, dual citizen tapos tumakbo ka bilang governor or mayor so pag file ni mo og candidacy COC then uh, it would suffice as to terminate your dual citizenship the filing of COC suffices to renounce foreign citizenship which effectively removing any disqualification of a dual citizen this is so because in the COC one declares that he is a Filipino citizen and that he will support and defend the Constitution and will maintain true faith and allegiance to the same. Such declaration under oath operates as effective renunciation of foreign citizenship. Because, diba? um, in, okay, uh, you have to declare that as a Filipino citizen, you will maintain your faith and allegiance to the Philippine government. 
the mere act of filing by a person with dual citizenship has the effect of terminating the status of as a dual citizen. Okay, so that's uh, that's our example. So RA 9225, the retention of Philippine citizenship, any provision of law to the contrary, notwithstanding natural born citizenship by reason of their naturalization as citizens of a foreign country are hereby deemed to have reacquired Philippine citizenship. So this is your oath of allegiance to the Republic. Okay. So kung nagpa-naturalize ka as Chinese citizen tapos ay na-realize ni mo nga ay gusto din ko maging governor sa among lugar no or congressman. So kailangan sa ni mo mag-reacquire sa imong citizenship following RA 9225. Okay? So here you will state I solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the Republic of the Philippines and obey the laws and legal orders promulgated by the duly constituted authorities of the Philippines when I hereby declare that I recognize and accept the supreme authority of the Philippines and will maintain true faith and allegiance thereto and that I impose this obligation upon myself voluntarily without mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Okay. So in this case, natural born citizens after the effectivity of this act become citizens shall retain uh, of a foreign country shall retain their Philippine citizenship upon taking the aforesaid oath. Okay. Um so kani natural born Filipinos no nga nagpa naturalize sa in country may reacquire Okay, prior to RA 90, uh, katong naturalize in another country, they can reacquire prior to RA 9225. And they can retain citizenship. After the file, uh, after the effectivity of RA 9225. So here in AASJS versus the Tumanong, um, the question ang constitutionality sa um, RA 9225. So ano ang ruling dito sa case na to, no? Uh, it's valid based on the following reasons. Number one, by swearing to supreme authority of the republic, he implicitly renounces his allegiance to the foreign country. And second, by requiring an oath, it is it shifted the problem of dual allegiance to the other country. Because again, no, he has expressed his intention to submit his or her allegiance to the Philippines. So, problema na yan ng, ibang, ng isang country. Okay? Kung of which is also a citizen, kung if they will still consider him or her as their citizen. Uh, remember that dual citizens can exercise right of suffrage. Those who retain or reacquire Philippine citizenship after this act shall enjoy full civil and political rights and be subject to all attendant liabilities and responsibilities under existing laws of the Philippines with the following conditions. Those intending to exercise right of suffrage must meet the requirement under RA 9189 or Absentee Voting Act. But remember that right to vote is not allowed to dual citizens who are candidates for or are occupying a public office in the country no, where they are naturalized citizen. Let's say Senator D. I. Kalito sa, sa America. Okay. So you're, you cannot exercise your right to suffrage here in the Philippines. And uh, that would operate also as your termination, no? as a termination to your citizenship. Because again, you have to take the oath of allegiance in the other country. So uh, in that case, the problem is now, or the burden now is, is uh, transferred to the Philippines are in active services in the armed forces in the country which they are naturalized citizens. So kung armed force ka, armed for, member ka sa armed forces dito, de, um, 
in that case, you cannot vote here. You cannot exercise your right to suffrage here. Eligibility to run for public office by a dual citizen. The following are the requisites. Okay. Make a personal and sworn renunciation of all foreign citizenship upon filing of certificate of candidacy. So in the case of Condon versus Comelec, it shall be in the form of an affidavit of renunciation which should be executed before a public office. No, nga affidavit nga gina-renounce ni mo imong Chinese citizenship, imong Singaporean citizenship, or imong Australian citizenship in such case. No? Fulfill the residency requirement. Okay. In Kasi versus Comelec, the immigrant status and his possession of green card are proof that he is a permanent citizen of U.S. So, um, if the law requires 10-year residency, then you have to comply with that. Case of Coquilia versus Comelec, while well, RNA 225 restores to the person his Philippine citizenship, the same cannot be said for the period of residency, assuming that you became or that you have reacquired your Filipino citizenship, but if you do not comply or if you did have not reached okay, the requisite of the residency requirement for you to run for public office, then dili gapon ka pwede, disqualified gapon ka, or not eligible gapon ka to run for the office, and not a candidate for occupying public office, nor serving in the armed forces of the foreign country. So, those are the requirements for you. So unlike in Valier's case, mere filing of COC by dual citizen under no, so under RA 9225, lahi ng rule, it will not be sufficient. Section 5, paragraph 2 requires that for a dual citizen who reacquired Philippine citizenship under RA 9225, the twin requirements of oath of allegiance and affidavit of renunciation must be complied before one can run for public is again oath of allegiance and affidavit of renunciation. Therefore, absent the execution of affidavit of renunciation, mere oath of allegiance and filing of COC will not give the person the right to run for public office. So if you want to run, kailangan ni mo og, number one, oath of allegiance and affidavit of renunciation. Kasi dati, in the case of Valles, na kay oath of allegiance which is an essential requirement in the filing of COC, Certificate of Candidacy, then um, automatic na na ma-terminate yung dual citizenship. But pursuant to RA 925, it's not enough because you have to file an affidavit of renunciation. The twin requirements of swearing to an oath of allegiance and executing a renunciation of foreign citizenship served as the basis for our recent rulings in Hakot versus Dal, all of which involve a natural-born Filipinos who later became naturalized citizens of another country and thereafter ran for elective office in Philippines. In this case, Tambunting, a natural-born Filipino, did not subsequently become naturalized citizen of another country. So hence, the twin requirements in RA 9225 do not apply to him. So ma-apply lang siya kung Natural, na naturalized yung ka dito sa laing nasod or kanang you renounce your Filipino citizenship and then you want to reacquire it, then you have to follow the twin requirement under RA 9225 which is which are no, out of allegiance and affidavit of renunciation. So use of foreign passport after renunciation of alien citizenship. The use of foreign passport after renouncing one's foreign citizenship is a positive and voluntary act of representation as to one's nationality and citizenship. It does not divest Filipino citizenship regained by repatriation, but it recants the oath of renunciation required to qualify one to run for an elective position. Okay. So is it is a manifestation no that it's a positive and voluntary 
kanang act of representation as to one's nationality and um, citizenship. Here in the case of Agustin versus Comelec, um, he continued using his USA passport in his subsequent travels abroad, despite having been already issued his Philippine passport on August 23, 2012. He thereby effectively repudiated his auto renunciation on October 6, 2012, when first time he used his USA passport after renouncing USA citizenship on October 2, 2012. The petitioner's continued exercise of his rights as a citizen of the USA through using his USA passport after the renunciation of USA citizenship reverted him to his earlier status as a dual citizen. So in that case, no, that would not serve as um, complete renunciation of your US citizenship. Okay, let's say, nang renounce na ka and then you're still using that foreign passport no so useless imo ang pag renounce renounce kay imo ha manday gihapong gina exercise pa manday gihapon nimo imo ang rights and authorities as US citizen or privileges as a US citizen so you will be reverted reverted to your earlier status as a dual citizen Okay, so um, I think we have to end uh, in this topic and we'll continue next meeting. Thank you.